Hello everyone, welcome back to this series called Finance Current Affairs where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to the first question, if you haven't subscribed then please do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified about all our upcoming videos. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions, you can get them from the Telegram group. So the link is in the description below. You can join the Telegram group for the free PDFs of these sessions. So moving on to the first question now, which says, which two people-centric schemes were virtually launched by Prime Minister on 12th November with an aim to expand the scope of investment in the country and make access to capital markets easier and more secure for investors? So recently, two RBI schemes have been launched in a virtual event by our Prime Minister. So those two schemes are people-centric and they focus on expanding the scope of investment in the country, make it easier for the people, especially the retail investors, to invest in the capital markets with ease. So which two schemes am I talking about? Two schemes are Retail Direct Scheme and the Integrated Ombudsman Scheme. So answer to this question is option A. Let's discuss in detail about both of these schemes which have been launched recently. So both of these focus on the RBI's developmental role. As far as the RBI's developmental role is concerned, it focuses a lot on the financial inclusion. Okay, many schemes come up which uh, are people-centric, which make it easier for the people to avail different financial services, to participate in them, to make it easier for them to invest in all such things. Okay, so financial inclusion is the objective which have been focused through these two schemes. The two schemes will in expand the scope of investment in the country and make access to capital markets more secure for investors. Capital markets may invest karna or easy ho jayega or secure ho jayega. Isse zyada log invest bhi karenge. So overall investment ka scope badega in two schemes se. So let's see uh, what these two schemes are all about. The first is the retail direct scheme which focuses on widening the investor base to invest in the government securities. So government securities ka investor base expand karne ke liye retail direct scheme hai hai, which will ensure that the retail investors can easily participate in the government securities market which is otherwise denominated by the institutional investors. So if we talk about the government securities market, they are dominated by the institutional investors like your mutual fund companies, pension funds, various institutions okay the retail investors the in the investors who are not having that professional experience small amounts they are willing to invest those retail investors are not having easy exposure to these uh, these uh, government securities market and if they are investing also then also there is not that much liquidity so in order to address all these problems retail direct scheme has been introduced the second scheme which has been introduced is the integrated ombudsman scheme Ombudsman scheme, we already have three different schemes running, which focus on custom handling the customer grievances. Customers will be complaints hoti hai, in financial services ko access karne se related, jo bhi problems aati hai, unko address karne ke liye already kuch schemes hai. Ab ek integrated scheme lai ja rahi hai, which will address, now an integrated scheme has been introduced, which will address, address all the grievances of the consumers related to the services which they are taking from banks and BFCs or other payment system operators. So let's understand about both of these schemes one by one. Talking first about the retail direct scheme. So I have already covered this scheme way back when it was introduced. So in the Feb, in the statement of development and regulatory policies, it was announced that the retail direct facility will be introduced. Okay, when our monetary policy statement comes, when this also statement comes, then it was talked about the retail direct scheme. Lani ki. In pursuant of this very announcement, the RBI Direct Scheme, which is the one-stop solution to facilitate investment in government securities, was issued in July. So, July mein isse related sari details I thi. We discussed about those details of the Retail Direct Scheme in detail in one of the sessions. Humne ek session alag se liya tha, jis mein maine Retail Direct Scheme ke baare mein discuss kiya tha. But us time pe ye kaha gaya tha ki ye puri scheme ki details hai, but is ko launch, jo introduce karne ki data, jo announce ki jayegi, jab ye scheme wo later on bataya jayega. Basically, ye scheme jab se commence hogi, jab se start hogi, uski date baad mein aani thi, aur finally 12th November 
ऑनवर्ड्स अब इसकी ये स्कीम बेसिकली इम्प्लीमेंटेशन में आ गई है सो दिस दिस स्कीम वेन इट वॉज इन टॉक्ड अबाउट इन दी फेब्स स्टेटमेंट ऑफ डेवलपमेंट एंड रेगुलेटरी पॉलिसीज आफ्टर दैट आर बी आई केम अप विद दिस स्कीम इन डिटेल इन दी मंथ ऑफ जुलाई बट एट दैट टाइम इट वॉज सेट दैट द डेट ऑफ कमेंसमेंट विल बी अनाउंस लेटर नाउ फाइनली ऑन ट्वेल्थ ऑफ नवंबर दैट डेट हैज बीन अनाउंसड सो रिसेंटली द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज फाइनली लॉन्च दिस स्कीम विच विल हेल्प द रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज दे आर ऑल्सो अ टाइप ऑफ अ फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट ओनली वी इन्वेस्ट इन डिफरेंट सिक्योरिटीज वी कैन बाई गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज एज वेल but the difference is that these securities are issued by the central or the state government so in securities mein government ki backing hoti hai ye ek tarah se government issued bond hai jisko aap subscribe kar rahe ho ek tarah se aap government ko paisa lend kar rahe ho in instruments ko khareed ke ya in instruments mein invest karke aapko is pe return milega aur government ko isse kuch borrowing mil jayegi jo wo use kar sakte hain alag alag purposes ke liye so it's like a bond issued by government by subscribing to them you are lending the money to the government which they will repay you along with certain interest okay as an investor you obviously want some interest so it acknowledges the government's debt obligation obviously when there is government backing there is more security involved the risk of default is less because the government is going to pay you back so we call them risk free gilt edged instruments okay gilt edged instruments are basically high grade investment bonds issued by the governments or some large corporation and by investing in them we are basically lending to such corporations or the government now under this scheme the retail investors the non professional investors who basically invest in different baskets of securities they can subscribe to government securities they can trade the government securities using the retail direct gilt account so retail investors can open the retail direct gilt account retail direct gilt account kya hai gilt account ek aisa account hai jahan pe आप आ, क्या डेबिट और क्रेडिट करते हो गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज जैसे हमारे नॉर्मल बैंक अकाउंट में हम कैश डालते हैं कैश विड्रॉ करते हैं ओके कैश का डेबिट क्रेडिट होता है ऐसे ही गिल्ट अकाउंट से गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज का डेबिट और क्रेडिट होगा ओके सो गिल्ट अकाउंट इज द अकाउंट वेयर वी डेबिट और क्रेडिट इज गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज अनलाइक बैंक अकाउंट वेयर वी डेबिट और क्रेडिट कैश हेयर दी गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज आर एडेड इन और विदड्रॉ Okay, so that's a retail direct gilt account where retail investors will be using the account to uh, deal in the your government securities. All right, moving ahead, this will bring the government securities within easy reach of a common man by man by simplifying the process of investment. So, this will be retail investors के लिए easy हो जाएगा government securities में invest करना और उनमें बाद में trade करना. Under the scheme, the retail investors can open this account with Reserve Bank using this portal. Investments can be made using following routes. See, you can either primarily issue the government securities, or once they are issued, you can also trade them. So, investors can place bid as per the non-competitive scheme for participation in the primary auction of government. So, government जब इन securities को auction करेगी, तब आप उन्हें खरीद सकते हो. Or you can buy and sell these securities in the secondary market as well. There is a separate platform for trading in these government securities that is NDS OM. NDS OM stands for Negotiated Dealing System, Order Matching System. So, ये एक electronic system है जहाँ पे हम government securities की trading करते हैं. It's an electronic, screen-based, anonymous, order-driven trading system to deal in government securities. So, if you want to trade in the government government securities in the secondary market, this is the electronic platform for doing so. Moving ahead now. The payments for these transactions can be done through your bank account. आपके savings bank account से पैसा जा सकता है UPI या internet banking के through. So you can either pay them using internet banking or using UPI. The money can be directed from your savings bank account and you can invest in these government securities. And there is a helpline number mentioned as well where you will be getting all kind of necessary support which you need. The services which will be offered through the scheme include the transactions. the checking the balance statements you can nominate someone else as for those government securities you can pledge or uh, uh, these securities can be uh, pledged and you can raise funding using them and gift transactions okay over all these purposes the options are available under the scheme and important thing is that no fees will be charged for facilities provided under this very scheme सो so, ये था हमारा सब रिटेल डायरेक्ट स्कीम के बारे में अब क्यों इसको इंट्रोड्यूस किया है व्हाई द स्कीम इज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड हाउ इट विल बी हेल्पफुल सो एज वी हैव जस्ट डिस्कस इट विल फैसिलिटेट द इंडिविजुअल इन्वेस्टर्स टू इन्वेस्ट इन गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज विद ईज 
okay so rbi seeks to democratize the ownership of government debt securities beyond the banks and managers of pool resources so sirf institutional investors ab se you know uh, dominate nahi karenge retail investors can also invest in them earlier if they used to invest there was not much liquidity now this step will bring in more liquidity it will become easier to enter and exit the government securities market for retail investors as well this step will help government borrow more so isse government ab easily or borrowings retail investors se bhi raise kar payega overall it will improve the ease of access of government securities market for your retail investors all right so this was all about the first scheme talking about the next scheme now integrated ombudsman scheme as i just discussed it is to handle the customer grievances jo bhi customers ki problem hai unhe redress karna unki grievances handle karna wo is scheme ka kaam hoga already teen schemes thi banking ombudsman scheme was there ombudsman scheme for nbfcs was there ombudsman scheme for digital transactions were there in teenon ko combine karke ab ek hi scheme bana diya gaya hai integrated ombudsman scheme earlier we had these three schemes okay uh, and now they have been integrated into a single scheme the integrated ombudsman scheme it will provide cost free redressal of the customer complaints involving deficiency in services if you are taking any service from a bank for a mm nbfc digitally you are doing some transactions you might have some deficiency in the services which you are taking so cost free redressal of your complaints will be done once you are approaching a bank that okay this this is the problem bank is not able to address them within 30 days then you can get that problem redressed under the integrated ombudsman scheme moving ahead now the scheme is based on one nation one ombudsman ek nation mein ek ombudsman scheme ho ye iska objective hai isliye teen schemes ko integrate kar diya gaya hai ek hi portal hai ek hi email hai ek hi address pe aap apni sari complaints file karke unko redress karwa sakte ho so they, this scheme focuses on one ombudsman scheme to handle all the grievances associated with banks and bfcs digital transactions so there is one portal one email where you can get all your problems redressed you can file the complaints you can submit the necessary documents you can track the status of your uh, problem getting redressed you will be you can give the feedback you will be provided the necessary um, feedback all through one portal or one email address okay multilingual toll free number is also there where you can get your problems redressed so now it will not be necessary for you as a complainant to identify under which scheme you should apply so alag alag type ki problems hoti thi to alag alag teen schemes thi aapko dekhna padta tha ki aapko kis scheme ke under apply karna hai now that problem will be solved of deciding under which scheme you need to apply because both all three these schemes have been integrated into a into one scheme that is integrated ombudsman scheme the scheme defines deficiency in service as the ground for filing complaint complaint filing karne ke liye ground kya hai ki service mein koi bhi type ki deficiency hai so earlier if you used to file complaints many of them were rejected because they were not covered under grounds listed in the scheme now the only ground is any kind of deficiency pehle hota tha ki ye type ki complaints is scheme ke under handle hongi ye type ki iske under ab bol diya gaya hai ki koi bhi deficiency hai service mein wo sari scheme ke under handle hongi to wo aapki complaint reject hone ke chances ab kam ho gaye hain aapki grievances easily address ho jayengi a centralized receipt and processing center has been set up Uh, at RBI Chandigarh to for receiving and processing the physical and email complaints in any language. अलग अलग languages में आपकी complaint address करने के लिए एक अलग से center बनाया गया है RBI Chandigarh में जो सब आपकी complaints में deal करेगा So this was all about this second scheme. Why this has been introduced? Obviously to enhance the customer experience, to resolve their complaints. to ensure more uniformity make the mechanism more user friendly so that customer is delighted satisfied and the objective of financial inclusion is achieved okay so is reason ki wajah se taki customer ki problems address ho sake unhe zyada se zyada easily achhi financial services mil sake ye is scheme ka objective hai so this was all i wanted to discuss now moving to the second question which is also related to these schemes only it says which of the following is incorrect which is incorrect in relation to the integrated ombudsman scheme so dekhte hain inme se kaun si statement incorrect hai first one says scheme integrates existing three ombudsman schemes yes it's correct second says scheme is based on one nation one ombudsman with one portal email address to handle customer complaints yes this is also correct 
centralized receipt and processing center has been set up at RBI New Delhi for receipt and initial processing of your complaints. No, not at RBI Delhi, but at RBI Chandigarh. So this statement is incorrect and we have to identify the incorrect answer is option B. This was all about the two schemes launched by RBI. Moving to the last question and next topic of the day now. It says, which of the following is not a reason behind the rise in inflation in US to a 30 year high in November 2021? So, if you are going to the news recently, we have seen that the US inflation in US has surpassed the record high levels. So, let's see what's the reason behind the same and what is going to be its impact on India. US mein 30 saal ke baad inflation apni highest level pe pahunch gayi hai. Like in India, we have the target rate of 2 to 6 percent of in for inflation in US. This rate is just 2%. So 2% around round hi inflation hoi chahiye. Usse zada nahi badhni chahiye. Based on the kind of economy US is. India mein 2 to 6% ka inflation rate is uh, the target rate. In US it's just 2%. So ab US ki inflation badh ke 30 saal ke high up pe pauch kai hai. Jo ki hai 6.2%. So ye ek... Uh, एक ऐसा चीज है जो अटेंशन जिसको देनी चाहिए ओके ये बहुत बड़ा इंक्रीज है यूएस के लिए इफ वी टॉक अबाउट इंडिया 2 टू 6% इज द रेंज बट इफ इन यूएस द इन्फ्लेशन गोस बियॉन्ड 2% इट्स समथिंग टू वरी एज फार एज द यूएस इकॉनमी इज कंसर्नड सो दिस राइजिंग प्राइसेस हैज कॉर्नर्ड अ लॉट ऑफ अटेंशन 6.2% इज द इन्फ्लेशन रिसेंटली व्हिच इज आफ्टर 30 ईयर रिकॉर्ड हाई लेवल so let's see what have been the reasons behind the rise in inflation. Inflation is basically sustained rise in prices over time. Kuch time ke liye jab in prices cheezo ke badhte ja rahe hain, usko hum inflation kehte hain. Inflation hoti kiyo hai? What's the major reason why behind inflation? The major reason is the demand and supply gap. When there is a lot of demand but you are not able to meet the supply, then the prices are going to rise. This has been the major reason in US as well. There is a lot of demand, but they are not having enough supply to meet that demand because of which we see the inflation going on in their economy. So firstly, if I talk about US, then the American businesses have begun resuming normal operations with the help of COVID. Okay, so US may inflation ke baad ab businesses wapas track mein aa rahe hain, logo ke paas paise aa gai hain. Okay, uh, the government programs were run because of which the money was provided in the economy. People are having money. COVID vaccines have started resuming the situation which it was. Normal operations have begun. Okay, there has been a sharp recovery and this sharp recovery uh, ability of people to have more money and spend it has increased. लोगों के पास काफी पैसा आ गया है और रिकवरी भी हो रही है तो अब उनकी और डिमांड बढ़ने लग गई है जिस वजह से यूएस की डिमांड बहुत ज्यादा है अलग-अलग कमोडिटीज के लिए द रिकवरी वाज फर्दर फ्यूल्ड बाय बिलियंस ऑफ डॉलर्स पंप्ड बाय द गवर्नमेंट नॉट ओनली टू प्रोवाइड रिलीफ बट टू दोस हु लॉस्ट देयर जॉब्स एंड टू स्टिमुलेट द डिमांड सो व्हाट वाज द काइंड ऑफ पॉलिसी फॉलोड इन यूएस instead of uh, investing the money during covid in different infrastructure in health and all what government did there it provided the cash to the people the money to the people the ones who lost their jobs government transferred money in their accounts okay then you know to provide the relief the money was transferred to the accounts of people now those people have cash available that's the reason why they have started demanding more Moreover, after uh, the COVID recovery began, the COVID vaccines were rolled out, the things started resuming back and the people started demanding. Low ke paas paisa a gaya, government ki policy ki waise kaafi dollars pump kiye ga economy mein. Ab low ke paas wo paisa available hai, wo demand kar rahe hai. That's the major reason, reason behind the rise in demand. But although the demand is rising, the supply is not rising. Prices were pressured by high demand from consumers plus with cash combined with shortages of US workers, workers and snarls in the supply chains worldwide. US may kaafi workers ki job gai, thik hai, ab wo work nahi kar rahe, production nahi ho raha, output nahi ho raha, toh logo tak wo product service pahunch nahi paare jin ki demand hai, jis wo aise prices badh rahe hai. Is ke alawa, supply chain ki agar mein baat karu, toh, US koi products agar import karta hai, wo bhi impact hoi hai, supply reduce hua COVID ke wajh se, unki apni country mein production kam hua. So because of all these reasons, the supply is affected. When there is no supply of the products, demand is there, 
obviously there will be inflation companies let go of employees and sharply curtailed production so a lot of employees have lost their jobs in us they are not working there is less production so if there is no production there is no output how will uh, the demand of people be met who are demanding those products so that's the major reason behind the shortage of supply of the products the pandemic led wide uh, spread lockdowns disrupted not only us but the economies worldwide because of which global supply chain got affected globally sabne suffer kiya hai pandemic ki wajah se sabka production output kam hua hai to aap wahan se kuch import kar rahe ho wo bhi affect hoga aap kahin export kar rahe ho wo bhi affect hoga so demand supply mein jo mismatch hai us wajah se inflation achanak se us mein itni badh gayi iske alawa government ne jo policy follow ki hai wahan jiski wajah se zyada se zyada paisa pump hua economy mein और डायरेक्टली लोगों के अकाउंट तक वो पैसा गया है उनके पास कैश अवेलेबल है उसने इन्फ्लेशन का उसने बेसिकली प्राइस राइस को बहुत ज्यादा कंट्रीब्यूट किया है द गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसी हैज कंट्रीब्यूटेड टू अ लॉट टू द राइज इन द प्राइस लेवल बिकॉज द मनी वाज डायरेक्टली पंप्ड इनटू द इकोनॉमी बाय ट्रांसफरिंग फंड्स टू द पीपल नाउ पीपल हैव दैट मनी अवेलेबल टू डिमांड मोर ऑलराइट नाउ हाउ इज इट गोइंग टू इंपैक्ट इंडिया व्हाट विल बी इट्स इंपैक्ट ऑन इंडिया we can have different kinds of impacts in india firstly if the prices are rising okay if in us the prices are rising and you are say importing something from us then the price of those goods will rise so those goods will become expensive for india not only if you us inflation is going on in us if it's going on in any other country from where india is importing something obviously those products will become costlier india kuch import kar rahi hai us se wo costlier ho jayega इन वहां पे इन्फ्लेशन होने की वजह से जिस वजह से यहाँ भी उसका इम्पैक्ट देखने को मिलेगा यहाँ भी थोड़ा सा इन्फ्लेशन होगा देन सेकेंडली हाई इन्फ्लेशन इन एडवांस कंट्रीज लाइक यूएस कैन फोर्स दे सेंट्रल बैंक टू अब लूज मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी एंड टाइट एन दैट पॉलिसी एंड दे वुड इंक्रीज देयर इंटरेस्ट रेट सो इफ इन्फ्लेशन इज गोइंग ऑन इन यू एस दैन देयर गवर्नमेंट विल मेक देयर मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी मोर टाइटर इफ दे विल इंक्रीज द इंटरेस्ट रेट now once the interest rates increase over there and you as a country are borrowing from there the borrowing cost will increase it will become costlier for you to borrow from there moreover investment options become good over there so foreign portfolio investors who are coming to india investing in india from us they will withdraw their money and invest in their own country because their interest rates are high so it will take away your foreign portfolio investments okay so you can see both impacts are there आप अगर यूएस की पॉलिसी मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी टाइटन हुई वहाँ इंटरेस्ट रेट्स बढ़े तो अगर आप वहाँ से बोरो कर रहे हो तो आपके लिए वो बोरोइंग एक्सपेंसेस हो जाएगी इफ यू आर इन्वेस्टिंग इन डिफरेंट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स इफ यू आर बेसिकली प्रोवाइडिंग इशूंग डिफरेंट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स ऑफ देयर थ्रू विच यू आर रेजिंग मनी इट विल बिकम कॉस्टली फॉर यू और अगर आप वहाँ पे अगर वहाँ के इन्वेस्टर्स आपकी कंट्री में आके इन्वेस्ट कर रहे थे क्योंकि उन्हें इंटरेस्ट रेट अच्छा मिल रहा था अब यूएस का इंटरेस्ट रेट भी बढ़ गया सो वो लोग फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट जो आपकी कंट्री में ला रहे थे वो वापस विड्रॉ करके पैसा यूएस में इन्वेस्ट करेंगे जिस वजह से आपके एफ बी आई फ्लोज अफेक्ट होंगे आर बी आई विल ट्राई टू अलाइन इट्स मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी एट होम बाई रेजिंग द इंटरेस्ट रेट डोमेस्टिकली विच इन टर्न माइट रेज द इन्फ्लेशन ओवर देयर विच माइट रेट रेज द इन्फ्लेशन इन योर कंट्री एंड द कॉस्ट विल गो अप सो आर बी आई भी अपनी मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी जब उनकी तरह अलाइन करने की कोशिश करेगा अकॉर्डिंगली ताकि वो और एफ बी आई इन्वेस्टर्स को अट्रैक्ट कर सके सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ पॉलिसी अगर वो फॉलो करेगा आर बी आई भी तो इन्फ्लेशन जो वहाँ हो रही थी वो यहाँ भी उसका हमें इम्पैक्ट देखने को मिलेगा ओके सो दैट्स द पॉसिबल इम्पैक्ट विच कैन बी देयर इन इंडिया नाउ कमिंग बैक टू आर क्वेश्चन वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई विच ऑफ दीज इज नॉट द रीजन बिहाइंड द राइज इन इन्फ्लेशन सो डिमांड सप्लाई का गैप जो है वो मेजर रीजन है अनएक्सपेक्टेडली फास्ट पैंडमिक रिकवरी लेड डिमांड येस high demand from consumers flush with cash yes this is a reason companies letting go of employees and curtailed production production kam hui supply kam hua this is also correct so all of these three are the reasons ye do demand inflation ke reason hai ye supply side factors hai so both of all these three are the reasons we have to identify which is not a reason so none of them is not a reason so answer is option e this was all for today's session I hope this session was useful for you with this I would like to end up this session thank you so much